Brilliant. I'd, I'd love to dive into some of your thoughts about contemporary art and music. But before we do, um, Stephen Chan in the, in the chat has asked, some of what has been described reminds me of fractals with nature. What is the relationship between archetypal patterns and fractals? Are they two of the same or is there some differentiation? I think the best way to understand symbolic patterns is fractals. That's for sure. Um, if people are interested in that, my brother by, wrote a book called The Language of Creation, which goes more into it in almost like a mathematical way. Um, but that is really the way to understand order. And it, what, what fractals do in terms of symbolism is that in some ways you basically have one pattern, which is like one and many, like that's, that's the pattern. It's like one and many, and, and, and unity is almost like one and two. So it's like unity, uh, opposition, and then re re, you know, resolution of, of opposition. Sometimes it can become more complex, but usually that's just the basic pattern. Uh, and it can re be represented in all kinds of ways as a mountain, as all these different these different types of patterns. But the idea that it's fractal is very important, which means that because you can experience the pattern at every level, you can experience unity. So let's say it this way: you can experience unity and multiplicity at let's say take, let's take a, the relationship between people and, and groups and things. You can you can experience it within yourself. We have a multiplicity of thoughts and and passions and and ideas, but you're somehow able to notice that you're one person. And then you can do that in a group, in a family. So it's like there's multiple people in the family, but we recognize unity within that family. Then you can scale that up into group, into groups, into churches or religious groups or cities, nations, et cetera, et cetera. You can just keep scaling that up uh, until you realize that, you, you, you know, the idea that, for example, the United States is one thing. You know, it's like, why is it one thing? It's like billions and billions of things, but it's true through that fractal relationship. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that modernism has done is that if I, we, we do want to get into modernism, is that modernism has tended to level the, the fractal nature of things. It tends to want to either, either stay in opposites, you know, kind of irreducible opposites, often wants to reduce it into like a basic opposite where you don't have this 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 self same fractal structure um and so because of that it tends to so a good example would be you know the way that traditional societies are usually set up or have this fractal nature right so a medieval village has the home with the hearth and then those homes in the hearth exist in neighborhoods with churches. And then all those neighborhoods with churches exist in like a bigger city with the cathedral. The cathedral is the highest building. And then and then it it's like the center for the entire city. And then now that reproduces itself all the way down. And so what modernism tends to do is that it it like levels. It doesn't tend to want to understand the, the fractal nature. And so it'll create things like suburbs, like suburbs. And and uh, let's say shopping centers, and then there's no centers, and the houses become decentered. We don't even think about you know the manner in which the house the, the family would come together properly in a house. It's just like living spaces basically that that are just kind of leveled. So modern modernity tends to do that. It tends to move towards towards absolute uniformity, and then also idiosyncratic multiplicity. So and if you look at most modern movements, you'll notice that they tend to swing between those two extremes. And so you can have something like, let's say in painting, you can have something like supremacism and expressionism happening at the same time. You know, you have these movements towards abstraction where we want to reduce, you know, if you think of Malevich's painting, for example, you want to reduce everything to, to, to its absolute essence, like color field painting, even all the way into the 70s or, or conceptual art. And then you have, you know, uh, absolute breakdown where it's like everything goes, there are no rules. It's just complete idiosyncrasy. You know, you tape a banana to a wall and that's considered equal to any form of art. Um, so so that's what that's definitely what I think happens. I don't know modernism as much in the, in music. Uh, so I sadly, but I do see something about, uh, for example, atonal music in the 20th century, that it has that tendency. It's like it doesn't take it into account the fractal nature of, of how we experience music. And so you have this, 
this like imposition of mathematical structures that are extremely complex onto a musical system that doesn't take into account the human desire for something like a round, like a simple round, like a simple return or a simple uh, cycle of 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 uh, of coherent experience. And so you and so it's. I don't think that modern music or modern art is. Um, how can I say this? That it's that it's stupid or that it's you know a lot of people have this idea that it's just anything goes. No, it, it's not true. It's not anything goes. It actually tends to be extremely like almost tyrannical imposition of like systems of thinking onto the art. And then you end up with, with things that people actually, or that very few people can enjoy because it's so high that it's, it's almost impossible for it to land. Mm, beautiful. Um, I think um, Taiwi Roberts, who uh, can't be here today um, has asked, um, you've discussed before your view on contemporary art um, as an odd fetishization of the art object removed from any actual function. Could you say more about that, and especially whether you think that contemporary um, music has arrived at a similar place? There's much crossover between these two worlds, and I wonder if music might have also been uh, removed too far from having a functional context. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how music has evolved in the modern era. And he says, thank you so much for your work and, and best wishes. No, I, I totally think that the same thing happened to music that happened to all the other arts is that if you think about the medieval, in the medieval world, the people struggle to understand this. And they think that it's, that it's actually like a diminishing of art. But in the medieval world, poetry and music would always serve a function, which is why, for example, poetry would be panegyric. It, most poetry in the medieval times would be panegyric, would be something like celebrating something. Like celebrating a king, celebrating a saint, celebrating Christ and everything. And we tend to think like that's lower, but it's because it's actually because it was trying to serve a purpose in the world. And music, I think, would have been the same. That is, most music would have been either, uh, let's say, folk music in terms of dancing. So it has a communal, um, a communal function. It would have been composed for certain events, for certain high figures like kings and and nobles or whatever to celebrate certain accomplishments often related to poetry as well. So let's say someone would compose a ballad to celebrate a great feat that would have that would have happened in a in a battle. Um, and then you you can see, of course, that the highest version of that would be celebrating God. And so the highest forms of music would be used, would be directed towards the church and directed towards uh, celebration of God. And and I think that even as secular people i think it's probably possible to kind of understand why that is it's just saying we want the music to be integrated into everything else we don't want it to stand out as a just a strange like idiosyncratic thing but rather we want it to integrate with other things and therefore it has to participate in the world and especially the church the church would have been a manner in which it participated in 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 society at the highest level celebrating the highest thing but then also would have been in in relationship to the to the to the poetry in relationship to the images as well um in the space let's say in a kind of sacred space so architecture music all these things would have come together into into a kind of celebration so what we see with the modern music is first of all all already I think already with the opera, we have a problem, which is that we have a problem because in some ways we're moving towards like, let's say entertainment. Now there's nothing wrong with entertainment. I, I think entertainment's fine, but I don't think that that's the highest part function that music can play. But it's it, sadly, that is pretty much now today what it has been relegated to. And I think that already starts at the moment at uh, with the celebration of opera as being supposedly the highest art. And you see the same with dance. It's like, you know, ballet becomes the highest dance. Well, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't the highest dance be more integrated, like folk dancing or 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 court dancing would have been more integrated into the world in ballet because ballet is just spectator. And so I think that concert music already brings music into a space where it's going to it's going to reach high. So it's like this is the thing when I talk about this separation of like absolute, let's say, a kind of tyranny and then a kind of idiosyncrasy. So it's going to bring highs. And so I totally agree that Bach and Mozart, you know, and maybe Beethoven are reach highs that liturgical music didn't. 
uh, because it kind of abstracts itself and it moves away from its its ground, like the way that it's incarnated into the world. But I think already when you get to Beethoven, you're like in deep, you're 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 seeing the trouble like right out the door, like you're just seeing the trouble coming. Uh, and I think that that trouble starts to unravel rather quickly. And so then you end up with composers that are so obscure in terms of popular capacity to listen like if you, nobody listens to Webern that doesn't study art like nobody listens to all these 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 contemporary these modern uh composers uh and then and then what happens is the music that becomes popular becomes more and more let's say uh trite and more and more almost like all in the all in the hips right it just kind of moves down into the hips which was there in the Middle Ages. Like, it, you know, there was dance. Dance was part of it, but there was something kind of holding it together. But now it moves just in, into the hips, and then it's like basically, you know, uh, whatever, electronic dance music is the is the, is the end of that. It's like it's just a beat, basically. It's just a beat. The pop music, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's like it's just the same, especially now these, like, new AI gen – they sound like AI gen – I think they've been working using AI for a while because you have these, like, melody tropes and then you're listening to a song, you're like, what the hell? Like, I just heard that, you know, and then they, they people kind of, they they pull out certain tropes from each other's songs. And then all the songs just end up sounding exactly the same. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's very weird. Um, so I think that that, I think that the, the de-incarnation of music has led both to its moving towards something completely obscure and that nobody cares about except for people that study music. And then coming all the way down I, the, the one that's the most incarnate in some ways it was i think jazz was the most incarnate because it had it did have because it stayed with dance i think it was still the the best the best of what the the modern world had to offer was was jazz uh but even that gets like it's like yeah i don't know it's like i i think i like listening to miles davis but then i don't it's like i just like just I'm just like, what am I listening to? Like, I can handle 10 minutes and then I'm, then I'm done. You know?